Hello everyone and welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan. Thank you for supporting the channel. Okay, uh, about a week ago, I told you I was getting some live animals, moiring, uh, from a purveyor of microfauna primarily, although I also purchased some neocaridina from him. And I'll talk about uh, everything that came in this box. I don't do unboxing videos because I've only got two hands and an iPhone. Uh, plus, I'm just not a big fan, but I am a big fan of what uh, has arrived for me. And I want to talk about that, obviously. So Phillips Fishworks is the name of the operation. And I'm not sure what part of the country uh, they, AKA he, probably first name Philip lives, but what a wonderful human being. And I've watched his videos on the channel and it's just mesmerizing to listen to this man talk about his passion for cultivating uh, live fish foods, microfauna, uh, stabilizing ecosystems in aquariums by using small critters, primarily scuds, but uh, countless others that generally live in a symbiotic relationship with scuds and other microfauna, and that's what he sells, and that's what I bought, and I'm gonna introduce most of what I purchased into my 10.7 uh, Blackwater Aquarium that is currently being uh, cycled. I, it is cycled, the water parameters are excellent. I should say seasoned. I'm um, just every day that goes by, it's more and more appropriate environment for living creatures. And so these are going to be among the first living creatures I put in there. And I, I threw some ram's horn snails in from the get go as well as a few cherry shrimp that I got from another online seller. Those are all doing really well. I put some Amanos in. In a perfect world, I would have put the scuds and what have you, what's in this jar here in first, but you know, it's not a perfect world. So what this guy is mostly known for is little trademarks such as it is, is a bag of bugs, bag of bugs. And what that looks like is a plastic bag, <laughs> that part's easy. You see some hornwort in there and a little bit of leaf litter, probably an alder cone. And amidst all that is countless microfauna. Um, you see them scurrying about in there. Scud, there's a scud right there. And that's what came in the bag. There's no exact count, that would be impossible, but it's enough to, to start a culture either in a specific culturing environment or to just put them right into your tank. You also get with the bag of bugs, which uh, I forget the exact price, you get um, three of these cones. Uh, I think they're from a, I forget the tree they're from, but they're the spiky uh, seed pod balls and you know it's funny with these I never thought you could use um, these particular botanicals in an aquarium because of their uh, potential for releasing uh, gum sweet gum sap things like that but uh, Philip assured me if that's your name that um, it's not a problem and it's his favorite go-to botanical and he sends everybody these uh, seed pods because they're spiky and can hold a lot of the microfauna for shipping as well as they look really badass. They're really cool. I'm going to pour out everything I got from um, Philip into this vase and it's not going to be a pretty experience. It's not going to be seamless because like I said, I'm holding the camera but I wanna try and do this for you guys. I think it's cool. I think it's important in some cases. Now you see some living ones in there. I'm gonna to wanna to, uh, deal with those pretty quickly, but let me just empty all the contents. So I poured the uh, seed pods, that's what I'm gonna call them because I don't know their official name, into the jar. Now I'm going to set this phone down. It's gonna to topple and I'm gonna pour the rest of the contents into the bag. 
And then I'm going to lift up the phone and shake, 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 and try to get everything I can out of this bag. But I, I'll get back to that and not uh, make an um, infuriatingly soul-crushing video of me trying to remove a few leaves and scuds. So that's what you get in your bag of bugs. And it's just ripe with all kinds of critters. And his instructions are simple. Just pour this into the environment you want to season with scuds and other microfauna, contents and all. No real need to acclimate. Obviously you can, uh, especially if you think the water temperatures are radically different. But these creatures are pretty darn hardy. And uh, as I indicated in a previous video, chances are you're gonna get scuds eventually in this hobby. They can hitchhike on plants and any number of other things find their way into a bag and they readily reproduce in your aquarium if they're not devoured by uh, your fish. Scuds in theory can um, hurt a shrimp colony, but Philip assures me he's kept them both together. And as a matter of fact, I bought some shrimp from him as well from the same tanks as, as these and everybody's fine. Now, if if you have a situation in your aquarium where the scuds are running out of food, you know, detritus, plant matter, all the stuff they like to break down, then obviously they'll look to plants and potentially other um, critters as small as them or smaller to uh, satisfy their hunger. And, you know, that's kind of how it is with lots of uh, things in your aquarium. So a bit of the Darwinian principles in play here. And that's why I bought them, to create a food web, as Philip calls it, uh, and stimulate the ecosystem from the bottom up, right? Instead of just putting a bunch of fish, uh, shrimp, and snails and calling it a day, let's go even lower on the food chain into these creatures right down to what you can't even see uh, living amongst the biofilm feeding on it even the biofilm film itself it's all desirable my plan is going to be to put these directly into the tank uh, and I, I i will endeavor to do that or at least partially show you what that looks like in the tank itself momentarily now the other thing I bought from Philip at Philip's Fishworks is a culture of white worms. And they came and they look great and there's a ton of them in there. And that's in a, an organic potting soil or um, soil substrate. Uh, Philip says you can use any number of things provided they don't have uh, extensive amounts of other ingredients like fertilizer or different um, media that might cause problems for your culture um, moving forward. And his instructions come uh, and they're right here and I'm going to create a white worm culture. My caveat is that ideally these worms like 60 degrees. I don't have a basement. I live in an apartment. See, there's outdoor in the Lakeshore Drive in Chicago, beautiful late summer day here. But I don't have a cool place and a refrigerator is frankly too cool. But there are some, uh, some indications that I will have success if I just keep them as cool as possible in a plastic uh, container that I'm going to transfer these to with more soil that you moisten, you add the culture, and then you feed with any number of other things. A glop of yogurt and oatmeal is what Philip uses. And I'm going to probably do something just like that in a shoebox size plastic container. I'm gonna keep those along with my peanut beetle culture and it's a science project. I don't need to culture this. I'm not a breeder. I don't need extra small worms. I mean, black worms when I can get them are my go-to, but I'm thinking this could be a wonderful way for me to learn something more about the hobby, to help Philip at Philip's Fishworks, and to potentially just create another very healthy live uh, fish food for my wonderful aquatic creatures. Uh, white worms have more fat content, uh, so breeders like to use them to fitten up their uh, young fish. 
but obviously, you know, and I beg your pardon for using the word obviously, I just, uh, <laughs> I tend to do that when I think I'm trying your patience uh, to make you, you know. What I'm trying to say, folks, is that any food that's live is gonna be good. This has a fire, higher fat content. I won't have enough worms to like overfeed my fish, these critters. Uh, anyway, so it's likely not going to be a concern, but he, you know, signifies that you shouldn't feed them every day to your fish. That's not going to happen anyway. So I got the white worm culture. Uh, I think it was 12, 15 bucks, something like that. The bag of bugs, which was a little bit more money, but very manageable. And I received a few extra uh, of these pointy spiked seed pods in a separate bag. I think that was $15 to use in my sump. I'm gonna try them there and see how it goes just for fun. Uh, there's already probably countless scuds in there anyway. So now I'm gonna move, carrying this and show you where it's gonna go, okay? It's gonna go into this black water tank that I talked about. I should say partial black water tank. The water is lightly tinted I've been filtering with floss in addition to the small canister filter, and you can see the progress of this tank. I'm not going to belabor that in this part of the video because there's a previous video, just go a few back, where I do the uh, setup and progress report for this 10.7 gallon uh, SR Aquaristic partial black water tank that I'm doing, and you can see all the fun stuff that I've grown inside and outside. I will say I'm doing more plants than most people who are endeavoring to make a black water tank would use because plants aren't generally found in that biotope anyway. So purists uh, would use little or none, just leaves and sticks. And I can't go there. I love plants too much and I'm relying on them to help me out. And scuds love plants. So I, I wouldn't even have a live culture uh, sustainable if I didn't have some sort of plant matter for them to feed on, especially in a new tank where none of the botanicals are seasoned. So here you see some of his Neocaridina. He says they're not anything uh, beautiful, so he doesn't even rate them like Fire Red or Bloody Mary or anything like that. Um, they're workhorses and they're part of the uh, food web and he sells them at uh, priced accordingly. They're inexpensive because they're just mules to get the job done. You can see an amano shrimp's already in here. I already released some higher quality, if quote unquote quality, uh, invertebrates into this tank because they came first from another online seller of ornamental shrimp, Nisi shop wonderful wonderful uh supplier and human being as well so i'm so happy to meet and support these uh, fellow hobbyists who are trying to eke out a living in this hobby this hobby is never going to make anybody rich i mean i don't even think corey at aquarium co-op is rolling in the dough I, it's a low margin business lots of variables uh, and difficult. So where I can support, especially a mom and pop, you know, someone like me who's just trying to do what he loves and make a few bucks, that's my pleasure. It's actually a privilege. So I'll be acclimating the shrimp that I am right now, uh, you know, the way you're supposed to. So not drip acclimating, but adding a little bit of, of tank water every few minutes or so. And until I've got about a 50% and uh, maybe a 45 minute time frame attached to it. And what I'll do is basically pour all these contents into there. Now, since I've already put in a couple of these pods, I'm not sure if I'm going to put the pods in here. I think these might go into my sump, but I did release these from a separate bag I got. You can see a scud right there tootling around. And there's a flurry of activity when uh, coming out of them. There's another little white dot. So all that stuff came out of these particular pods. And I'm excited to uh, have them get into all the nooks and crannies and start eating the plants that, of course, are going to start 
to rot and decay in the early going, especially, you know, crypt melt with this crypt parva. Things like that are inevitable. And so scuds and the other microfauna will immediately start to break that down for me. Uh, so that's a benefit. And then when I finally get livestock and I'm um, zeroing in on licorice garami, they're a small mouth predator and uh, little uh, tiny scuds, not even the adults, will be a perfect food source for them, as well as the microscopic fauna that is also included. All right, I didn't do the exact, I didn't do a, a box opening per, and I didn't um, do a release into the tank because I'm not sure I just want to dump and run, especially when I've already added things in here. So let me just process that and think about it. But this is all it takes. That's what I got from Phillips Fishworks. And uh, I hope you pay him a visit. He's got a YouTube channel and a little web store. It's easy peasy. Um, do, do him a solid and come check out what he's got going on. And look uh, here for further updates and reports on this tank. Super excited. Glad to have shared this with you. Okay, everybody. I'm about to put my hands in the tank. Ciao for now.